Experts say by 2020, depression will be the leading cause of death. The World Health Organization says at its worst, depression can lead to death. Close to 800,000 people die every year due to depression. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ali Raza Deoji, and today I'll be speaking about mental health and how a closed-minded society can only make it worse. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen what people don't understand is that your mental state of mind is a lot more important than your physical state. Your mental health is everything, to be honest. People believe that the physical health, that the physical bodies are everything. But if your mental state of mind isn't correct, you can't really do anything. It's really pure logic. First of all, what is mental health? Since I'll be talking about anxiety mostly today, let me define anxiety. The literal definition is a mental health disorder characterized by feelings of anxiousness or worry that are so strong that they interfere with one's daily activities. What is my experience with mental health? Let me give you all a personal example. Mental health issues actually run in my family, mostly anxiety. My mom and I have both faced it before, but luckily they've actually overcome it. For those of you who don't know what anxiety is, like I just said before, I guess you guys aren't very good listeners if you don't, but Again, it's feelings of worry or anxiousness that are strong enough to interfere with your daily activities. When both of my parents faced anxiety, I was very, very young, and when my dad faced it, I actually wasn't born yet. But my mom and dad both told me that they used to suffer from panic attacks, they used to get worried all the time, and they were worried about being worried, which only made it worse. My friend got, uh, my friend got diagnosed with anxiety back in 2016. At the time, my friends and I didn't really know what it was or we didn't really understand what was going on and why we wouldn't see her for days. Which really only made it worse for her because she couldn't talk to us about it and we had no idea what was going on. Even though my mom and dad had both faced it, I didn't, know, I didn't know what to do. My friends didn't know what to do. None of us had any experience with it. No one, no one can really understand what's happening when you have anxiety. It's, that, it's just that much of a mental torture. Let me tell you all something. Anxiety is such a mental torture that it is one of the main reasons of suicide. Sure, depression. Anxiety is the root of depression. Remember that. A lot of you may be asking, what do panic attacks look like, or what do these episodes look like when my, f when my friend had them or when my parents had them? Well, one simple word to describe it. Whenever my friend had it, she went into panic mode. As my friend explained to me herself, well, these episodes would look like this, kind of. She would isolate herself in a room, not talk to anyone, blinds closed, blinds closed, curtains closed, everything, lights turned off, complete darkness. I thought she was sick, I thought she had the flu, but I guess I was wrong. There were days, uh, there, were, there were moments uh, uh, that I wouldn't see her over a span of days where I wouldn't see her for two or three days and I used to be really worried about her and I tried to text her or call her but she would never respond. The thing is, when I couldn't talk to her about it, did, not only did she feel worse, but I felt bad. I was worried, while well, my parents were worried, that I would start to follow in her way and that I would possibly get into depression, but luckily I didn't. The thing is that one day we were traveling with, uh, on a school trip and this friend, of mine, when, this friend of mine, when we were taking off, she got hit by a panic attack. While we were flying, she was panicking throughout it. Luckily, it was only a one hour flight from Dar es Salaam to Nairobi. When we landed, she wasn't able to talk straight or walk straight. This was really a particularly rough time in all of our lives and my friend went to see a therapist. The doctor prescribed her a dog called Russell. While I saw my friend suffer and I couldn't do anything about it, this drug was really what my friend needed. She had tons of sleepless nights, she wouldn't eat for days, she would only get two to three hours of sleep on occasion. The drug not only helped my friend sleep, but it kept her calm and kept her normal. This drug had side effects though, like any other drug. My friend, went into, my friend had, two main, had two main side effects that affected her the most. Migraines and headaches. Migraines, which are headaches. 
and abdominal pain. The migraines, she's had them since she was a kid. She always used to go through them. She would at times cry in school, and I would, and I would always wonder, why is she crying over a headache? And I learned that while I progressed, I learned that it's really not easy. My friend had faced these abdominal pains throughout her life. She was born with it, and the drug not only made it worse because she hadn't, because she hadn't overcome it yet. The abdominal pains were hurting my friend so much that the doctor said that it could actually affect her spine. At times, she wouldn't eat, which caused her to lose weight very, very quickly because she would, because she'd have this medicine right before dinner. And the thing is that once you have this drug, you can't have any food. <laughs> she wouldn't eat. And then she'd eat at random points after like four or five hours, which would cause her to have a weird sleeping schedule. My friend, if she wouldn't have stayed healthy or fit, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be able to walk today because it would be affecting her spine. My friend, my friend had faced pains throughout her life, but these side effects came in at such a young age that they only got worse. They didn't only affect her stomach, but also her spine, like I said, and her head. She usually had... As a kid, whilst my friend was going through this, I felt quite helpless and quite, well, useless, frankly. As a child, I couldn't talk to my friend, be there for her, just sit with her. I couldn't, have any, I couldn't have any meaningful conversations with her because I didn't know what was going on and I couldn't talk to her about what was going on. At times, when I wouldn't see her in school, I wouldn't see her at home, I just didn't know what to do. But, I, but, my, family, my, but my family made sure that even though they were at work or at school, they would always make me feel happy, and kudos to them for doing that. Once I got home, I just used to be alone because my dad used to be at work. My siblings are all older than me, so they used to be at school. My mom was just around the house. She was busy. And, well, I, I felt quite alone, to be honest. But when they got back, like I said, they made me cheer up, and I was happy. The schedule caused my friend to go to school less, and I wouldn't see her, or my friends wouldn't see her. She would just be at home which drove her into depression, actually. While facing anxiety, all she could think of was the struggles of her life, and she couldn't really do anything about it. Even though my friend got better, she, even though my friend luckily got better, she was, still going through this, she was still going through random points of anxiety and depression. Luckily, she has overcome this now with the support of us and her family. We all ask ourselves, what can we do to help if we ever see a person with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, anything? Everyone wonders what they do and what they should say. Like I've said before, communication is key. Being that one friend that understands and helps, just, or just listens to their problems, is, uh, is just being that friend that helps or listens to their problems can save a life. Remember that. Use a use phrase like, I understand, or don't worry, I'm here for you, or it'll be all right, can help them, listen to them. They need someone to talk to. In the US, 59 million Americans have either gone to therapy or still do. The results have actually been incredible. 80% of therapy, 80% of these people have said that therapy was actually helpful for them. This is actually slowly helping decrease the suicide rate because uh, because right now, it is at an all-time high at 28%. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, being that one friend someone can talk to can save a life. Thank you.